Hello and welcome to this year's 2018 version of the Signing and Interpreting for the Deaf welcome video. I try to do one of these every year and pretty much the content kind of stays the same. But if this is your first year, especially at LTC, especially if you're doing signing for the first time or maybe even the second time, I encourage you to watch this video through. I promise to keep it short. And I have some interesting things I think to share with you on how to do your program and some of the things to keep in mind. Okay? So the, the purpose of this particular program is not so much to make our kids into interpreters. I know it's signing and interpreting for the deaf. And we do teach a little bit of the interpreting portion of it, but for the most part, the goal of this particular program at LTC is that we develop an interest. And we see whether or not the children have a desire. We, we light the spark, so to speak, and see if a flame catches. So our goal here is not to get perfect signs. Our goal here is not to have the absolute perfect interpreter. We're not going to get that with one hour a week for a couple of months, three months maybe. And for, and for many of you, it's one hour a week for the last three weeks, you know. I know that people cram for these things. But anyway, the goal here, though, is to develop interest and to see if a child has the aptitude and wants to carry this forward in roles of leadership when they get to be of an age to choose for themselves. So that's the goal. And so you'll see that reflected in much of what I say. So if their signs are not the same as everybody else's, that's okay. There is no one right way to do it. The video training videos that I'm creating they're not the golden standard. What I have found is that many churches do not have anybody that has a skilled interpreter. And so I put together these videos so that I am teaching, and it's not the best way, and I'm hoping there's an adult that can help the children, and this is not <clears throat> just the kids on their own with my training videos. They need to have the encouragement that goes with it that I can't give through a video. So the videos are not a gold standard though. If you have an interpreter, if you are an interpreter, if you look at my signs and go, wow, that's awful pigeon. Well, it is. I can't teach ASL on a video. And I'm not really convinced seriously that ASL is exactly the right way to, to interpret poetry, which is what most songs are. <clears throat> but anyway, regardless of my opinion there, if you want to do ASL, ASL is fine. If you want to do C signs, that's fine too. That's not the important part. The important part is making sure that we set up our children for success in this program. So. You teach your signs your way and they will be acceptable, okay? That's, that said. Now, with signing, we have a number of different challenges. <clears throat> Some of our kids have challenges. They're frightened, they're shy, they're uh, uh, withdrawn, they don't want to be in front of a group. I encourage, this is one of the last single solo events at LTC. Most everything else is a group. And leadership does require some individual solo type stuff. So I encourage you to, to help the child to get through the, the, the fear of standing in front of a crowd. One of the things that LTC teaches is that courage to be able to stand and profess one's faith in front of a group. That said, don't let that be the reason why one of the kids cannot do this. If you have a child who wants to do the signs and can only do it in front of a very small group, 
we are open to that. We'll make sure that we can do that, okay? We have left-handers and we have right-handers. So when I teach my lefties, I teach them to sign with their left hand as dominant. In sign language, you have one dominant hand and one, the way I say it is, one hand does the work, the other hand does sets the stage. So when I'm signing, my right hand does 85% of the work. The other 15% is set up, is either a mirror or the setup of a stage for the other hand to do some work. If you have a lefty, it is okay and it's even encouraged that they use their left hand to be their dominant hand. So instead of doing sunrise, they would do sunrise. The real problem is that the lefties generally are ambidextrous to a certain extent because our society is so right-handed. So if their signs sometimes come out and look like, hello, my name is Paul. And you go, whoa, which, which eye do I watch them with kind of thing. If you're teaching a left-hander, and this is true to some extent to the, to the right-handers as well, but not so much. If you're teaching a left-handed person or left-handed participant, encourage them. I've even had them take and put, you know, hold on to a belt loop in the back and then sign everything one-handed to get them used to signing that with their left hand and let that become dominant and encourage that. Uh, what else is there? Uh, other special needs, if you have a child who is special needs in whatever regard, whether that be, whatever the challenge is, don't let that be an impediment for them being part of the signing program. Uh, sometimes a kid just needs to know that they can be successful at something, okay? All right, now with that all that said, um, I have chosen three songs. And the first song I've chosen is My Jesus, I Love Thee. And it's a simple song. And it's simple for a purpose. I've chosen it because I have found that sometimes the songs that I've chosen are really more challenging to our third graders and our fourth graders. And even some of our fifth and sixth graders who are doing it for the first time. And it discourages them. So this song is really, really simple. And I'm hoping that it's chosen primarily by the kids who want to do it and want something simple, okay? So this was a simple one. I'm really hoping that the high schoolers and those who have done this for 12, well, not 12 years, but 10 years, nine years, eight years, don't choose this song. There are more challenging songs. The second song that I've chosen is Faithful Love. Faithful Love is a beautiful song, and it's very flowing, and it's pretty, and it's not very fast. Those of you who have done it time two or three or four times and uh, not quite ready for Nobody Feels My Heart Like Jesus, which is a little bit quick, uh, this would be your song. This is kind of the medium level song. The, the other song, I already announced it, is Nobody Feels My Heart Like Jesus. This one is a bouncing song. Nobody feels my heart like Jesus. Okay? And I want to see this song expressed. Okay? If you're singing, nobody fills my heart like Jesus. You know, it, that's not the way the song is. All right? So I have one now for those who want to get some expression, want to get some movement into it. So many times our feet are just nailed to the floor. Our feet do not have to be nailed to the floor when we're signing. We're allowed to move around, okay? The whole body is an expression. Anyway, nobody fills my heart like Jesus is the last one. And the scripture is from Hebrews. And for those who are who have done signing since the third grade and are now juniors or seniors, or have been participating in a deaf program at church and maybe have been interpreting even a little bit on their own. The scripture is that challenge, okay? The scripture is a little bit different. 
it's prose as opposed to poetry. And it tells a bit of a story. In this case, it's from Hebrews. In Hebrews, it's a sermon. So this is almost like someone is going to be interpreting a sermon. And it's just a few short verses. I think it's like 11 through 18. So what is it? Uh, seven verses. And they're pretty simple verses. Uh, look out on the website to get the, the lyrics and the scripture. I'm using the CEV, the Contemporary English Version. I choose the versions for the, for the Bible verses based on what is easiest to interpret and gets the message across. So, so I'm not always NIV or, or RSV or NRSV, which are the most popular ones. I will choose to have to do the ones that are uh, um, easiest to interpret. So anyway, I think that pretty much is it. Welcome again. You are welcome to call me. You're welcome to text me. You're welcome to email me. I'm available from the website. Uh, if you don't know how to get a hold of me, my, my, I, I'm going to let you find it on the website. I don't want the entire world spamming me, so I'll give you my email address here. But I am available to you, okay? So anyway, good luck. I'm looking forward to seeing you all at LTC. Be sure to let me know if you have any questions or if you run into any problems. God bless.